Dimitris Diamantidis is one of the most decorated European players of all time, but has never played a single minute in the NBA. Panathinaikos legend, whose one of the nicknames was Octopus for his long hands and defensive force, spent all of his pro career in Greece, where he racked up every trophy and individual award imaginable. The accolades don't stop there, but the real question is could Diamantidis have succeeded in the NBA had he chosen to go there? Let's remember how the versatile Greek playmaker dominated in Europe and try to find the answer. For many years, Diamantidis was described as the best European not playing in the NBA. He remained loyal to Pao, while the likes of Spanulis and Jesikevicius tried to find their luck in the States and came back empty-handed. So what kind of an NBA career for Dimitris could we have called success? The Greek was a team first player, a winner, and I couldn't imagine him anywhere else but playing for a title contending team, where a smart coach knows how to utilize his best abilities coming from the bench. From my point of view, having a 16-20 minute average on a winning team with something like 7 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists and 1.5 steals per game could be considered as nothing else but a successful NBA career. Yes, Jesikavichus had a similar line in Indiana, but that team was not even close to being a real contender for the NBA title and Sharaz himself lasted only 2 years overseas. Reaching these averages for 3-5 to five years while playing for a real contender is something not many Europeans have done, but in my eyes Diamantidis could have been a pleasant surprise. Greek was a complete all-around player who could cover the first three positions both on offense and defense. His game was never about himself. He played basketball in a completely selfless way, doing simple and right things on the court. Flashy passes or crazy dribble combos were rare, yet his trophy case is one of the longest in all Europe. That's what made the playmaker special. In clutch, he seemed to every time be in the right place at the right time. Like here in the final moments of 2011 Euroleague final against Maccabi. First he sees a late seal by Mike Batiste and serves up a perfect asses down low and then positions himself in the right spot and gets a steal after Nick Kaladis deflects an inside pass. He goes on to close out the game at the free throw line and the Euroleague commentators serve up a superb conclusion about Diamantidis' game. He gets fouled, he steals it, he gets fouled. I think Joko Bradovic just said, Demetrius, take care of this. Can we say anything more about the guy? That's why he's a champion. After all, he was never the fastest nor the most explosive player on the court. Maybe that was the reason why his playing style always revolved around including others, especially the bigs. The other major reason for it was Jelko Bradovic, the greatest European coach ever, about whom recently my colleagues at basketnews.com made an excellent video. The Serbian coach enjoys using mismatch situations near the rim, and with Batiste, Pekovic and Vujukas on the roster, Diamantidis had ideal companions for these wonderful entry passes inside. Against switches, the bigs had only one thing to do, seal their man and the ball would arrive. If he wasn't completely open to shoot, Dimitris' first thought was to look inside. And in Europe, it's not that easy to do with smaller spaces and more help available. Everyone likes scoring easy baskets, and I can easily envision the Greek being called extremely fun to play with by his hypothetical NBA teammates. Diamantidis was also a decent pick and roll creator. He evolved through the years as a passer with his vision getting better and better and even touched 6 assists per game average in the Euroleague for 4 different seasons. Thanks to elite size and wingspan for the point guard's position, he was able to see and throw passes over the opposing bigs, as well as see gaps when driving deep inside the area and make wraparound assists to rolling teammates. Five. By Hendricks. Goes to Maddox, what a pass, and he puts it down. Power offensive system often relied on four corner pick and rolls. Against these, the help side defensive rotations are extremely important. If they are not on time, this is what happens. Moreover, the help was needed because Mike Batiste was an elite pick and roll big. But when the help came, Diamantidis recognized the situation and created advantage with skip passes or kickouts outside. His size and strength allowed these skip passes to fly over the court fastly, 
generating open three-point shots or closeout situations where the defenders were put at a huge disadvantage. Scoring by himself was never the playmaker's strongest side, but by no means he could have been ignored on the court. The Amantidis lived by taking efficient shots, such as open three-pointers with his feet set and well in rhythm. This would have been a critical aspect to his NBA success. With superstars around, shooting is as important as ever. And on these open spot-ups, you could count on Dimitris. On pick and rolls, to avoid Diamantidis' drive, some teams tried to go under the pick, knowing that he was not so good as a shooter off the dribble. But Dimitris never lacked confidence, especially with that much time and space to prepare for the shot. 12 on the clock, steps back for three. Dimitris Diamantidis has Panathinaikos in front! He wasn't famous for superb speed or explosiveness either, yet the other 50% of his points came from under the rim. Being crafty with the speed changes and excellent body control did just enough on pick and rolls to allow Dimitris to get inside every now and then. Besides that, he loved to post up smaller guards whenever he had a chance and he was efficient at doing so. He had a nice crossover too. Take a look at another clutch play in the last seconds of a win or go home quarterfinal match against Maccabi. Diamantidis with the ball, guarded by Hendricks, gets around him, foul by Hendricks. Made free throw and the deflection later gave Pau a ticket to the final four and once again showed everyone that Diamantidis was all about the winning. Borstein, ball's loose. Tries to go ahead, the ball's loose again, it's Maccabi losing and Panathinaikos getting the loose ball to win and go to the final four. And winning always starts on the other side of the court. Here we finally arrive to see his arguably best skill and exactly why one of his nicknames was Octopus. 6'5 point guard was a defensive nightmare for opposing players whose combination of solid lateral speed, size and incredible wingspan for his position was usually used to defend the best perimeter players on each team. Diamantidis knew how to face guard and not allow small forwards to receive the ball, he could steal entry passes to the post and was extremely hard to beat in one-on-one -on -one situations. I know it might be hard to believe, but he was even better in team defense. Playmaker was amazing in positioning himself on the court. When needed, his help always would arrive in time or even before, resulting in a steal. Even six years after he finished his career, Dimitris is still number one in the all-time Euroleague steals list, with a significant advantage over the second place. To recap, which coach in the NBA wouldn't want to have such a luxury as Diamantidis was on his team's bench? When you think about it, every contender has a similar type of player, a defensive master, who continuously does the right things on the court, while providing efficient offense by doing only those things which he is capable of. His influence on the court was enormous, and that's what allowed him to become one of the most decorated players ever. That's what makes me believe he could have been successful in the NBA too. Do you agree? Let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Inside, Tomic blocked by Diamantidis. Unbelievable. The point guard comes up big.